What's up, everybody? Ron Placone here, reporting for Status Coup. So, you guys know how awesome facial recognition software is. I've covered it a lot with Status Coup. Facial recognition software, of course, has never helped, quote-unquote, catch a bad guy. But it has led to other great things, like a mother and her daughter getting kicked out of a holiday concert. Mismatches that happen up to 96% of the time, especially for black people and people of color. People being deported to countries they've never been to because of these mismatches. Databa databases being very susceptible so they get hacked. Uh, police scrolling databases for nudes or to blackmail an ex. You know, all kinds of great things. This technology is great. It's just totally wonderful. Well, here's another doozy that went viral this week. This happened out in Detroit. Innocent pregnant woman jailed amid falsy facial recognition trend. This happened. Use of facial recognition software led Detroit police to falsely arrest 32-year-old Portia Woodruff for robbery and carjacking, reports the New York Times. She was eight months pregnant. Eight months pregnant. Uh, she was detained for 11 hours, questioned, and had her iPhone seized for evidence before being released. Now, this is the latest in a string of false arrests due to use of facial recognition technology, which many critics say is not reliable. I'm one of those critics. The mistake seems particularly notable because the surveillance footage used to falsely identify Woodruff did not show a pregnant woman. And Woodruff was very visibly pregnant at the time of her arrest. In fact, when they showed up to her house, she thought it was a joke. She, she thought it was like someone played a joke on her. Because here you are, this, you're eight months pregnant. You're just standing there. They're like, oh, yeah, you committed this robbery, right? Wow. The incident began with an automated facial recognition search by the Detroit Police Department. A man who was robbed reported the crime, and police used DataWorks Plus to run surveillance video footage against a database of criminal mugshot. Woodruff's 2015 mugshot from a previously unrelated arrest was identified as a match. After that, the victim wrongly confirmed her identification from a photo lineup leading to her arrest. Woodruff was caught, was charged in court with robbery and carjacking. Yeah, carjacking. Like, like, like eight month pregnant people do that all the time. That I, I obviously I've never been pregnant before and I never will. I can only imagine what it's like. But, you know, I, I have friends and family who've been pregnant before. I'm pretty sure a carjacking isn't an activity that, that would be very feasible for, for someone who's eight months pregnant. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not. I, I don't think that's actually a, a common feat for anybody, really. But yeah, anyway, uh, I mean, I mean, this is this is comically absurd. And she's suing the city and, and I hope she gets a, a lot. Uh, so Woodruff was car charged in court with robbery and carjacking before being released on a one thousand one hundred thousand dollar personal bond. A month later, the charges against her were dismissed by the Wayne County prosecutor. Woodruff has filed a lawsuit for wrongful arrest against the city of Detroit. And Detroit's police chief, James E. White, has stated that the allegations are concerning and that the matter is being taken seriously. Well, then why, why do incidents like this keep happening? Why is that? So there has been a response to this uh politically and, and hopefully this is a sincere thing after black pregnant woman's false arrest senator ed markey renews call for federal facial recognition ban good and ed markey for doing that that's good in response to reporting about an innocent black woman misidentified as a criminal suspect by facial recognition software and arrested in michigan u.s senator ed markey who you know full disclaimer ed markey usually good on these issues when it comes to digital rights issues ed markey is usually solid on this. He's solid on net neutrality. He was one of the only senators who stood up against COSA in the hearing and expressed concerns about COSA. So good on Ed Markey, and he's doing the right thing here. So the New York Times detailed this, uh, this story last week, um, and here's what Ed Markey had to say. Unacceptable. Facial recognition frequently misidentifies vulnerable and marginalized people. We need to pass my bill to prohibit the use of biometric technologies to, by federal entities and law enforcement so that people like Portia aren't wrongly accused. Markey and Senator Jeff Merkley. Markey and Merkley, the digital rights duo, along with reps from the Jayapel, Ayanna Presley, first introduced the Facial Recognition and Biometric Technology Moratorium Act in 2020. In March, they reintroduced the bill with Representative Rashida Tlaib, as well as Senator Bernie Sanders, uh, Elizabeth Warren, and 
Warren and Ron Wyden. By the way, just for the record, in 2020, when there was the big facial recognition campaign, or actually I think that was in 2019, there was the big ban facial recognition campaign. The only presidential candidate, to my knowledge, to sign on to it was Bernie Sanders. He was in this was during the primary. So there were like, you know, 47,000 uh, presidential candidates. Remember that clown car you, you had the, the Tom Steyer, Andrew Yang, Liz Warren, um, all those people. Tulsi Gabbard, I'm um, pretty sure the only one who signed on to the facial recognition ban uh, and ban, not a band. They're not a band. Not yet. The ban and embraced it was Bernie Sanders. Uh, Ed Markey went on. The year is 2023, but we are living through 1984. The continued proliferation of surveillance tools like facial recognition technologies in our society is deeply disturbing. Yeah, that entire story is deeply disturbing, and it's just par for the course. We've covered a lot of the stories that have happened uh, here on Status Quo. This is just another, for instance, eight months pregnant. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, uh, it, it gets a little bad because she, uh, the, the woman suffered from dehydration when she was being held. So, um, so she had a very bad experience. She was held for a long amount of time. She was eight months pregnant, and she suffered from dehydration, uh, among other things. So hopefully, hopefully she is OK. And of course, her, her, her unborn child is OK. And hopefully she gets a hell of a set settlement because this is absolutely ridiculous uh, what they did beyond ridiculous and completely unacceptable. So what can you do? everybody. Well, guess what? You can go to banfacialrecognition.com and you can sign the petition to let your elected representatives know that we need a ban. We can't, we can't, oh, well, they could just, uh, they, they can just use facial recognition software on days that end in Y, or, or they can just use facial recognition software. I, I was, um, I know that in the in the in the city of Oakland, California, they actually ban facial recognition uh, for police and they also legalize mushrooms um, or, or decriminalize at least mushrooms at the same time. That was it. That was a double whammy for laws. I got to say that was like a double win. I was like, man, that is perfect. And I would have even been willing to compromise in that case. I would have been willing to compromise. And I would say, OK, the police can never use facial recognition software unless they're on shrooms. That's the only way. If, if, if they think they're looking for a green dragon. <laughs> no, it's awesome that they ban facial recognition and decriminalize mushrooms. And of course, the ban facial recognition movement has been very successful. It has been banned in various cities various uh, college campuses. Uh, we're working on banning it at all live venues, and a lot of venues and artists have signed on to ban facial recognition at concerts. So please, please, please make your voice heard. Banfacialrecognition.com. Facial recognition is unreliable, unjust, and a threat to basic human rights and safety. There are more and more examples. We just gave you yet another one of government and law enforcement using this technology, which is why we need to act now to stop it. Send a message to your lawmakers to demand they support legislation to ban facial recognition. And Ed Markey, of course, has just uh, expressed support again for a facial recognition ban. So, again, that is banfacialrecognition.com. And, folks, you can catch me live. I am leaving very soon. You're not going to see me here at Status Quo for a little bit, but I'm going to be at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, Scotland, August 16th through 27th. I'm part of the free fringe, so my shows are free. Just show up. My shows are daily at 4 p.m. at the 32 Below venue in the Little Cellar. That's 32 Below, Little Cellar, 4 p.m. daily, Edinburgh Fringe Festival. More information can be found at my website, ronflacone.com. There have been status quo viewers at every show on the road I've done this year, and every local show, actually, for that matter. Every single one this year. Let's keep that streak up, folks. But this is the challenge. This is the international challenge. Scotland, where you at? ronplacone.com for information and October 21st. I'll be back home in my neighborhood, San Pedro, California. I'm doing a comedy series right in my own neighborhood at the Grand Annex. Tickets for that show are available at ronplacone.com. October 21st, myself and Stephanie Blum, who's a phenomenal killer comic. You're going to love her. ronplacone.com for those tickets. And this is Ron Placone for Status Quo, signing out. <laughs>